Number five, which of the following might be a way to review height limitations in a zoning code? Setbacks, FAR, districts, D, height is controlled by the building code. Um, all right, so the answer here is um, one that's the best of the answers given. Um, setbacks really are not going to tell us very much about heights. Um, setbacks are gonna be like side yards, front yards, rear yards. Um, so that's in plan away from the, um, from the property line. Uh, so setbacks in less dense uh, places, more like a single family residential will be much bigger. Uh, setbacks in kind of dense urban places might be as little as zero so that you have uh, the storefront right up to the sidewalk and the buildings just bump right into each other on the side. Uh, so setbacks is very important to zoning codes in terms of the density and the feel of a place, but it doesn't really have anything to do with heights. Everything is going to be really understood through districts, uh, heights, setbacks, parking, everything is, you know, you're going to have residential districts, you're going to have uh, manufacturing districts. And just because I have a residential district doesn't mean I can't have manufacturing in it. It just means it'll be limited in some way. And just because I have a manufacturing district doesn't mean I can't have a residential in it. It just means it'll be limited in some way. So the districts is how you start to, s each of these districts will have multiple um, different uh, pieces of information, setbacks, FAR, uh, all those different things. Um, the only one that is really a, a potential answer here is gonna be B, FAR. And FAR is the floor area ratio. And so that's where I have a site size. Uh, and that site, uh, if let's say it's a 10,000 square feet, and if I have an FAR of one, that means my building can have 10,000 square feet of enclosed space. So I could have a two-story building where each floor is 5,000 square feet, for example, and that would meet an FAR of one. Uh, so this, the, the point of the FAR is to control kind of mass, which is one of the ways to control height. So if you have a, an FAR, um, let's say that the, the uh, 10,000 square feet uh, site and we have an FAR uh, that is say uh, two, that means I can build a uh, 20,000 square foot building. Well, just like the example I just get, gave, I could build a 5,000 square foot floor plate uh, and have four floors, and that would give me 20,000 square feet, and I would be maxing out my FAR. But in that process, uh, I'm essentially saying that the smaller the footprint, the taller it can be. The larger the footprint, the shorter it can be. So it's a way of controlling the sort of mass of a building, which includes the height. Uh, and I could build a very small footprint and have it go much higher if there wasn't any other height restriction. A lot of zoning codes won't have any other height restriction other than the FAR. Uh, some will have both, uh, some will only have height restrictions. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that it can be done, but FAR is definitely one of those concepts you should feel comfortable with. Uh, it's likely to show up that along with PUD, planned unit development, a few other things that are these sort of zoning code issues, and you should feel comfortable with those terms. Uh, height is absolutely controlled in the building code, although never um, as a, this is the absolute um, height limit you can build. It's almost always, I shouldn't say never, uh, I'm sure there are situations where it does do that, but if typically um, what a, a building code will say is, given this occupancy and this construction system, here's a height limit. Uh, and one of those uh, construction systems, maybe a port in place concrete or something, will have no limit. You can build whatever you want because it's very unlikely to burn, it's very unlikely to have any, uh, any real problems. Uh, so there is no building code height limit on it. Uh, so the building codes will limit things according to use and construction systems. Mm -hmm.